So why we need destination? What's the purpose? So let's try to understand first of all, what's the purpose of creating a destination? So a destination is a connection. to our service from where our app will take data from yes as you are all aware of that we usually use o data services to take take and give data to the server so we need to connect to our service now in sap btp applications to connect to any service we need to create a destination so a destination is a connection like in classic ABAP, we have R3 connections of type RFC, which allows us to connect to other systems. Similarly, in BTP, we use concept of destination. But there are, when it comes to mobile application or MTK application, there are two types of destination we need to create. One destination which will allow our mobile phone to connect to our service and another destination which will allow our web application to connect to the service. Yeah, This is what we will be doing. Yes. So basically we have the server where we have our ESPM service. And to connect to this service, we need destination so first we need to create a destination for our mobile application and this will be created in service mobile service center mobile cockpit there we need to create a destination and the second one we need to do it in the sap btp itself so sap btp sub account destination so eventually this SAP BTP sub account destination will connect to our service using mobile service cockpit destination only. So mobile will directly connect, mobile application will directly connect to this destination to access our service and the web application which runs in the browser which we will develop will also use a BTP destination to connect to the mobile service cockpit destination first and through this all the call will go to the service so now we need to first create this destination and then we need to create this destination so both of these destinations we need to eventually create so let's go ahead and see first creating the mobile connectivity so for that i'll switch over back to our btp account go to instances and subscriptions and come down to sap mobile service open that we will authenticate with the default identity provider and then we will create a mobile destination first so we need to switch to our application yes so we come here sap mobile service So let's go to mobile application, native MDK, com unabout trainings. That's our app. And now you can see the enabled options. We will go to mobile connectivity. And under the mobile connectivity, we can we can go ahead and create a mobile destination. So you can already see there is a default destination which was created by the system, but we don't want to use that. We can use, but we don't want to. Why? Because there has to be web application and mobile application, two applications, and both need to point to same destination. So that's why we need to create a destination with the same name. So what I will do now, I will just copy this URL. I will create a new destination. So click on create destination and we will be giving the name of the destination anubhav mdk dest remember this name is very important the same name we will create again in the in the sap sub account to let our web application connect to the destination 
So this name has to be C. So this is the first step we are creating. We paste the URL which we just copied about a minute ago and now we are just going to proceed further. Don't need to change any of the other properties. We just click on next, next, next. And here in the SSO mechanism, we have to choose forward auth token. Yes, forward authentication. That's very, very important. And then we click on next and finish. So this way we will create the destination which will be used by the mobile phone. So you see our mobile phone will be using this destination. So that's the first part which we have done. Yes, service cockpit destination. We have created with the name Anubhav MDK Dest. Now we need to create a destination in the BTP account, which will be used by the web application. So our web application will be using this destination. But here there is a small catch because now the web application would use this destination, but not connect directly to the service. So you see the arrow is not connecting directly there to the server. Rather, it is going to pass through the mobile service destination only. So what we need to do is we need to the destination that we will create. Is very specific. Is first going to connect. To mobile service destination. And through that, it will connect to our server. That is what it will do. So in this case, we will have to use a special type of destination called OAuth to Jot Bearer authentication type. So this destination type will be OAuth to Jot Bearer. type destination that's what we need to do so let us go ahead and do this in action now so I'm just going to create and to create this I have done a easy thing so all about training is committed for your learning so what we have done in our study material of this training we are providing you the necessary file which will make your life much easier to do this connection or to do this connectivity so what you need to do at this point of time is you need to go to the, <coughs> the study material of this training so please check the training block where you can find the study material of this course and in that study material you will have this anubo mdk dest file yes download that dest file on your computer which will be a zip file and now we need to go to the uh, sap btp account yeah so let's go to the btp account go to the sub account and inside the sub account you need to go to connectivity and destination tab you see this destination tab under connectivity section so here you need to import that destination which i have given to you so let's import that and i will just select the zip file so it's a extension is uploaded file is not okay so it should be text file so you need to extract the zip file so let me just import and import this text file Anubo MDK Dest. So please import that. You see, everything has come over here. Fantastic. So now you can see this type is OAuth Jot OAuth to Jot Bearer because it is not connecting direct to a traditional ERP system. Rather, it is going to connect to the internal uh, internal service. Yeah. Now we need to update this. And this, these two things you need to update. How do you update that? So first of all, uh, you need to get the address of the destination. To do that, you need to go back to mobile service cockpit. And in the mobile service cockpit section, once you go to the application, you need to go to the API tab. And under the API tab, you can see there is this address of Anubhav MDK dest file. Yeah. So this is our mobile service destination. So, so this destination, as I told you, as per the diagram you see our BTP destination is going to be used by web app and this web app use this to connect so this will connect to the internal mobile service destination so and the communication between these two destination will happen via OAuth OAuth to jot bearer type connection so that is the line so now let me just go back to here 
copy this address and replace this over here in the URL. This is the first part you need to take care. Yes. The second part you need to do is you need to go and get the service key from Access UAA instance. So let's open the sub account again. I just right click and duplicate this uh, tab. And if you remember in the previous class, the moment we created a MDK application, it would have also created a Access UAA backing service. So you need to go to instances and subscriptions. And under the under the list of all these things, you will see there is this uh, Access UAA instance created with the same name, com Anubhav Trainings, Access UAA service instance would have got created, you see here. So it has created this service instance with the same name as our namespace. Yes. So our namespace was com Anubhav Trainings. Yeah. So it has created a Access UAA instance of com Anubhav Trainings. That was our namespace for mobile application. And uh, here it has created a service key. So we need to go to the service key and view the service key. And this is all one time configuration guys. You don't need to do this every day. Once you are doing the basic setup, everything will be done out of the box. Yeah. So now here you see multiple uh, information. So go to the form view. Now here you first pick up the uh, client ID, client secret and token service URL. These three things we would need. So client ID, client secret and this URL. Yeah, all these three things we need. So first let's copy the client ID, switch over back over here and put the client ID over here. Then the client secret. So let's copy the client secret and put that over here. And then the service token URL, this, this part you need to replace. Just keep the OAuth token. This you need to keep as it is. Just replace this first part and just go back and copy this URL. Three things you need to copy and update over here. Fantastic. So now our destination is ready. Okay. It is also asking trust store location. Uh, we don't need to do, do anything over there. Everything looks good and you can save. Now you need to basically uh, do the, just check this checkbox, use JDK trust store. Uh, you need to save the destination. Yes. So, simple. Internet. Okay, it got saved, I think. Let me just see. I just save. Yeah, it's getting saved. So after it is saved, you just do a check connection. So this is a very important step. If your connection fails, then you will have problem in running the web application. So remember, mobile application work fine because the mobile destination was, was working and it was created. But web application will fail because this destination will be used by the web application. So I check. And now you see connection is established. Now, some of you may get confused about this bad request part. So don't worry about this part. You can ignore this part. Just check for the green checkbox and just check for this establishment or not. Yeah. So now at this point, everything is good and our configuration is complete so that we can now go ahead and develop our web application and mobile MDK application.